Olive is being fed from behind a screen to help keep her from getting imprinted on people. When she came in, she was pretty skinny. Although Olive's put on a good deal of weight, her muscles have not been as firm as we might like to see them, and her weight has fluctuated a good deal. She's remained bright and alert, and shows a good strong appetite. An otter with an infectious disease or serious liver damage probably would not. While we had her unconscious for exam and took x-rays of her chest and abdomen, we didn't detect anything out of the ordinary. Her temperature has remained within the normal range of roughly a 2 degree centigrade fluctuation that's normal for otters. The manner in which Olive was washed was shaped by three years of intensive research into the physiology of washing sea otters. Cleaning methods had been tested on several healthy trained male otters unfit for reintroduction to the wild, but had never been for, but never before had been tested on seriously ill or heavily oiled sea otters. How will we know when she's ready for release? Veterinarians and animal trainers must rely on a good deal of observation. Here you can see that she's quite strong, exhibiting appropriate protective behaviors and alerting behaviors. She's been eating well and has gained over four pounds. The unique anatomy and physiology of sea otters make them the most susceptible of all marine mammals to the detrimental effects of oil contamination. Since they're the smallest of marine mammals in North America, they possess the largest surface to body volume ratio and have relatively little body fat and no subcutaneous blubber layer. They therefore have to consume 25 to 30 percent of their body weight a day in shellfish just to maintain their weight and core temperature. Yet they live in waters that are typically 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit below their core body temperature, which varies from 37.5 to 39.5 degrees Celsius depending on their activities.